So I made a jacket. A reversible satin bomber. And I put Chainsaw Man on the back. I won't talk about the manga too much in this video, it's not really super important, but the best thing I can say is that it was just really enjoyable. Really fun read. Um, if you liked Doro Hidoro for a similar reason, then you'd probably enjoy Chainsaw Man, and if you don't want to read any of this, that's totally fine. The manga actually inspired me to make this jacket. You see, I saw the chapter 43 color page, and I, I know we all thought the exact same thing. This would look great on a jacket. And that's what I decided to do. I designed a jacket around that page. The characters are easy enough to like separate that I can just cut them out and put them on the back of a jacket. I think at the end of the day, clothing is about having fun. It's about expressing yourself. Admittedly, I didn't think I could get away with wearing this graphic on my back in public. As much as I am a fan, I've never been a huge fan of merch and I don't want to walk around with the opportunity to potentially make people uncomfortable by having half naked anime girls on my back. So my first thought was actually, well, maybe I'll just put it on the inside, but then no one's gonna see it. So I thought I'll make it reversible. That way I can choose to wear it sometimes, although I'm still struggling to think of a situation in which that'd be appropriate. Um, and then other times I can just wear a jacket that I'm at least a little bit proud of. And nobody can tell the difference. Maybe. For the fabric, I found this Cupro Linen Lyocell blend. And it had a finish that I really liked. It was really smooth and silky on one side, which initially was what I was looking for. But the other side was almost like a dusty, velvety texture. It was actually really nice. I got this burnt orange color that I thought would look really nice and I used that for the body. I bought black of the same material for the sleeves. For the other body, because it is a reversible jacket, I got this kind of purple color, mulberry, which was 100% Lyocell. And then I used the opposite side of the black fabric for that sleeve. So that way I'd get a little bit of this the kind of shiny satin texture and a little bit of that like velvety texture as well. For the ribbing at the collar, cuffs, and waist, I used this bamboo ribbing that I was able to find. It was listed as a medium weight, but probably should have looked more into it. It didn't end up being heavy enough. Um, at the collar, there's just not nearly as much structure as there should be. In the cuffs and the waist, it actually works just fine. And it's actually the softest material I've ever had on like a cuff, like a stretchy rib cuff. Um, but that's probably due to it being really lightweight. It feels kind of like a dress sock and that's really nice. Now I've never actually used artificial fibers before. So this was a first for me and it, it does handle very differently. Previously, I've mostly just used cottons and denims. The fabric does kind of flow and, and stretch a little bit differently and that makes it a little bit more difficult to handle. Now for the artificial fibers, they're not the best for the environment. They're not created in a way that is necessarily the best and most of them aren't disposed of in ways that are environmentally friendly or we haven't figured out a way to dispose of them properly. Most of the stuff that I used was primarily made of lyocell, which is a particular type of nylon that comes from cotton and wood pulp and is dissolved with a solvent. It's different from nylon though in the sense that they remove a very harsh chemical from the process which is carbon disulfide. It's still a very energy intensive process though so I guess like with anything you win some and you lose some. The other stuff I used was Cupro, also known as Bemberg. It's used as the lining on suit jackets sometimes. And then the bamboo. The interesting thing about bamboo is that we see it used as a fabric, but it's not made from bamboo in the same way that cotton linen threads are. Uh, bamboo fabric is actually another form of nylon. It's essentially how lyocell comes from cotton to wood pulp. Uh, the bamboo is made from bamboo pulp. It's dissolved with a solvent and similarly woven into the you know, strands and yarns. But, you know, people might think you can make fabric out of bamboo, but it's, it's just not the same. I don't know for sure the environmental impact of bamboo as a nylon as opposed to other forms of nylons and viscose, but I still think it's an interesting idea, and there definitely is um, an element to it that feels and works differently than other artificial fibers. I just think that's really interesting. It is used as a wool substitute sometimes as well, so I think it does have its place. One of the things that made me more confident in using these fabrics is that I got them from a supplier that tends to be more environmentally friendly. They're called Blackbird Fabrics and they're in Vancouver. It's not a sponsorship or anything. It's just that I've used them for a while. The service has always been fantastic. Um, and they've always had that focus on being environmentally friendly, which personally I really like. They also have pretty much the best selection of denim that I can manage to find in Canada. But the teal denim that I made into Gurkhas and this yellow denim that I made into a jacket all came from Blackbird and it's all been fantastic. In terms of the actual jacket, I wanted to do something that was more of a kind of satin bomber style, almost like a varsity jacket, but not as heavy weight. I definitely wanted to have the kind of like cinched cuffs and collar look that you see on like varsity jacket, but I wanted that kind of 
thin, flowy, satin look. I took a lot of inspiration from the film Drive from 2011 and the jacket that Ryan Gosling's character wears. It's a really interesting piece, um, mostly in just the way that it's designed. Obviously people like the white with the scorpion on the back and it's cool and whatever. But what was really interesting to me was the way that they constructed the shoulder. The actual sleeve sits separate from the body. They're separated by this black fabric, which extends underneath as well. I can only assume that it's a thinner, more flexible fabric for movement and breathability, similar to what would be at the cuffs and the waist of the jacket. And that's really interesting to me. It provides this nice flexibility and slouchiness through the jacket, something that I think is really hard to get right. And you can see, you know, regular and boxy styled clothing, but I think there is kind of an element of good design that goes into those things to make them fit wrong almost on purpose. Uh, some of the ways they would do that is like to make the shoulders more square, which is what I did, provide some extra space through the body, and it makes it like a little bit more slouchy looking. That's something that I wanted to do on the jacket as well, get that extra flowiness through the body. A lower sitting shoulder is another way that that's done. It's called a drop shoulder sometimes, depending on the way it's designed. And generally, you'll bring the top of the shoulder further down without making the side too much bigger. And that to me is kind of what I wanted to do. I wanted to do something similar to the jacket from Drive, but not implement the ribbing or the black stretchy fabric on the shoulder in the exact same way, because I don't want to steal another designer's work. And even if I did, it's something I probably could have gotten away with, but I wanted the design to be genuine. I wanted it to be something that I could come up with. Instead of stealing something else, and maybe I'll do a jacket like that in the future, uh, instead, what I wanted to do was make the shoulder a little bit longer. And I initially thought maybe if I take a second separate piece of the body fabric and attach it lower on the shoulder so it would sit at an angle kind of providing a lower slanted edge to the shoulder i uh, probably should have stuck with that now that i think about it because what i did instead was thought well if it's the same material maybe i can do it in the same piece and it would look more like a traditional jacket rather than like the you know, a lot of sports were these days having a lot of panels. I wanted to keep it kind of simplistic. What I would have had to have done if I stuck with my original design to do in one piece was have a sharp corner. And that wouldn't really work very well. It wouldn't create a very streamlined look. So what I did instead was rounded the shoulder. Now, when you round something, you can't pull it flat. It creates this kind of dimple. And that was something that I knew would happen, but I was just really hoping that the natural stretch that the fabric I used had and the kind of slouchiness of the design and the flowiness of the fabric would kind of cover that up. And it did to a certain degree, but maybe not as much as I would have wanted. I could have just reduced the angle, made it a little less rounded, um, or even just keep it entirely straight and, and just adjust the armhole to come higher up to match the extended shoulder. But I didn't do any of those things, and I probably should have. But that's okay. It was a design that I knew didn't make a whole lot of sense, but I wanted to try it. You know, I'm always, I'm always going to want to try new things. I'm always going to want to see if I can make something that doesn't make sense work. Because I just think it's boring if we all do things the same way all the time. And not every piece I make is going to make perfect sense. Or end up perfect. Or be exactly what I want it to be. And I think, at the end of the day, that's okay. I'd rather experiment with new styles and new ideas than just replicate what other people are doing or create things that are boring. So I'm starting with a two-piece sleeve that I made before, putting them together to make one single piece, tracing around it using a straight line for the bottom and curving out the top a little bit more. For the body, I'm using a denim jacket pattern that I made, which is two pieces again, but combining them into one, making the shoulder a little bit more square and extending it a little bit further out, adding a little bit of a round, and tilting my pattern so that I can take the original armhole. Adding a little cutout to the bottom where it'll sit in line with the ribbing. I'm matching the back shoulder piece to the shape of the shoulder that I made at the front and tracing the armhole around again. Making a test piece to make sure that the pattern works, although I definitely should have tested this pattern more, and then tracing it out onto the final fabric. The patterns I made had no seam allowance, so I just traced the line that I'd be sewing on and then I cut outside of that. I started by connecting the sleeve head to the armhole and pinning it together so that it wouldn't have any loose material. I went over that with a chain stitch, and we can see when we flip it inside out that there's no visible stitching from the outside. And with the connected sleeve, I now stitch down the sleeve and the body, completing the majority of the jacket. And then I'm cutting out the printable vinyl, taking a quick break because I was gripping it way too hard. Just like shake those fingers out, man, you got this. And then continuing to cut them out. 
I went into the small areas with a scalpel to get the extra detail out. I wanted the back to show through as much as possible, and I didn't want to have any of the original background in. I wanted it to be just fabric behind the characters. Laying the characters out on the back and then ironing them on, forgetting to take off the backing like an absolute idiot, trying it again, and lucky me, it still worked. The second, taking the back off ahead of time like a smart person, and then similarly ironing again, trying to move it minimally. A little bit of the crinkly texture from the paper still made it onto the vinyl, and it's not perfect, but after washing it a couple times, I'm sure it'll be fine. Then for the pockets, which again, I, I made a lot of mistakes during, flattening out the fabric with a beer that I very much needed at this point in the process, and then cutting out the pockets and the welt in one piece. That is something that I hadn't done before, but I probably could have done better. Flipping it inside out was the mistake, because then I finished the pocket, which wasn't necessary because it's all internal, you're never going to see it, it doesn't really need to be finished. If I had left the outside exposed, I wouldn't have had this weird awkward angle that you can kind of see um, right at the top of the pocket there. Because when you flip it inside out, as we do now, it's going to have this weird crinkle that I can never get straight, and that made stitching the pocket together very, very difficult. But you're stitching the outside of the welt to the triangles that were cut from the side, and stitching the top together to hold the pocket in place. Some fusing or interfacing would have helped hold the pocket flat as well, which would have been nice, but ultimately it would not have solved the problem of that kind of crinkle in the pocket. Giving everything an iron flat, and now we're kind of combining the two jackets together putting one arm inside the other and then stitching the front pieces together. And then pulling the hem of the jacket through the neck hole, attaching the ribbing, pinning it in place, and then stitching it closed. For the cutout at the front middle, I cut a little bit in with the scissors creating a kind of diagonal that I then stitched along, and stitching the cuff together, threading it over the machine, and then threading the jacket over and under the ribbing. With a mostly finished jacket, we still need to attach the snaps so I put it on a little anvil here. I removed some of the worst done snaps so we can still see the hole here present from it, but you want to thread that hole a little bit wider, put the top snap over, and then in a little circle, hammering them together. Before we do the snaps on the front, I need to finish the collar. If I had left the pockets unfinished, I wouldn't have had to open it again, pulling the neck hole through the pocket, stitching the collar, but I left it too loose and too long. So I shortened the height and width and did it again, although it still wasn't perfect. I went through a bunch of different snaps in the process, but the one on the right, the one with the little brass insert that's thicker, so much better. The ones that came with the tool were garbage, the ones that were sold without it were so much better. And the final snaps looked a lot better, but there were still some small tarnishes. Honestly, I almost didn't make this video. I made a lot of mistakes that I wasn't very proud of, things that I thought were either amateurish or just that I feel I should have known better, and redoing all of that now would be way more effort than it took to make the jacket in the first place, and it just doesn't feel worth it to me. I didn't want to make the jacket again either, I didn't have enough fabric, but also I just, it would feel wasteful to make a duplicate of a jacket that I already had. The shoulder I knew didn't make sense, but again I was happy with that because I was trying something new, but the pockets, uh, I tried one thing different and wasn't thinking for some reason, and I just messed them up, and I'm not very proud of that. I never used snaps before, and a lot of them now have like tarnishes, or aren't finished well because I didn't hammer them properly. And again, it's a minor thing, but every single minor thing adds up. They'll always say, oh, it's a learning experience, but it's really hard to not want everything you make to be perfect. I ended up hammering a hole through part of the jacket because I didn't know what I was doing when I was hammering the snaps, and I, I thought I could get away with having a layer of fabric beneath it, and I punctured a hole in it. I ended up just hand stitching um, some embroidery over the top. I put CM for Chainsaw Man, which I guess is fitting. Maybe wrong. Sometimes I see it online as CSM, and that makes me think I, I, I got it wrong. I never worked with images either, and I found this printable iron on vinyl, which actually, I mean, I gotta admit, it, it looks pretty good. Like, it almost looks professional if I didn't know any better. And that's probably the thing that, weirdly enough, I'm almost the most proud of. I guess the origin of the jacket. It, followed through. And maybe I should just be happy that it came together at all. Whenever you make anything at home, you don't want it to look homemade. You want it to be as professional as possible. You don't want people to say, oh, that's great because it's so cute. You want them to say, like, you did a good job and this looks like something that you could find at a store. So you've probably seen these videos before. I made a thing. Look at how good it is. Walk away. Do some cool shots in the street. But, like, I don't want I don't want to do that. I don't want to, to make everything 
that I do look perfect. I think it's worth embracing the imperfections. I think it's worth showing that there's things that I can still learn. I'm not an expert by any any stretch of the imagination, um, but I like to think that I can do things differently. And I like to think that I can use this learning experience to tell other people, essentially, what they shouldn't do. Um, and I can draw attention to the things that I'm still working on. And hopefully that will lead to better things in the future. Because I do think that inspiration can come from all sorts of places and I want to do new things in the future. And if making this mistake now means that I can do something new, great. Now the anime is coming soon, I have no idea who's going to license it, but you can probably watch it when it comes out. If you want to read the manga, you can probably purchase it digitally or in print if you live in an area that has it licensed. And I'm pretty sure you can get it on the Shonen Jump app, which is like $5 a month, and if you're sneaky about it, you can like pay for the subscription, read the whole thing in a month, and like... I didn't, I didn't tell you to do that, I just, I just, I said that you, I said that you could, but you didn't hear it. but also this jacket is not for sale.